Hi, I'm Robin White from Fantasy Wire, and I'm the guy that makes the wire fairies. This section I've entitled The Reverse Ice Lolly, and that's a cryptic sort of metaphor for how the proportions mess with your head as you're filling out the figure. So I've been adding the eight strands of 0.9. It's again, fleshing out, starting to take shape. Uh, you will hit a stage that I've called the panic stage. And what I mean by that is you get to a point where you think it's all going wrong and you must have made a mistake and you're not sure where. Uh, and I hit it absolutely every time, possibly more so now because I'm filming it and I'm conscious that I want it all to go right. Uh, I wouldn't say that I'm physically panicking, but you start to think, have I managed that wrong? You know, are our hips too narrow? Uh, they don't quite look right, and I've got to add a lot of material yet, and yet there doesn't seem much room. You know, the neck seems still too long. Have I got that right? There'll be something about the figure that makes you sort of anxious that it's not going right, and therefore it's not going to turn out right. And I hit it every single time. And all I can say to you is that I, I can't see what you're doing and, and the problems that you're sort of facing. But I tend to sort of just refer to the fact that I've stuck rigidly to my size guide. So the sizes must be correct. Uh, and therefore, it's probably like a mental trick that's being played on you because it's not going to look right until the last bit of detail goes in and it's all there in the right proportions. Everything's going to be a bit distorted and look wrong and your head is trying to see this finished figure. It's actually easier to see a finished figure when you're just looking at the skeleton because you've, you've got no corruption to your thinking about what it's going to look like. The minute it's partly filled up, it's corrupting your mental image because you're now seeing something physical but it's not finished and some proportions are fixed like the leg length but they don't look right yet because there's not enough meat on them and it's there's there's just nothing you can do about it uh i've likened it to there's there's a, a thing that i call the there's a thing that i called the reverse ice lolly uh, which if you sort of understand it sort of helps you make sense of the sort of proportions. If you took a human figure and she was made of ice and you melted it, the arms and the hands would melt away, the feet would melt away. You'd just be left with the sort of torso that was probably almost untouched because the density of ice would have retained its temperature. Uh, now, if you sort of run that sequence to just nothing, till there was nothing left, uh, it would show very odd shapes as it sort of melted away. The head would fall off because, the, you know, you can sort of imagine this figure melting. But if you run that sequence backwards, so you're, it's like a reverse ice lolly. It's, it's, it's building up. If you just ran the film in reverse, it would fill out and look very strange. And then it would just suddenly appear to be the finished figure. And the say, that's, that's sort of what you're doing with the wire you have to put on the volume where the volume is needed, but it's not in proportion to the figure because there's so little wire required on the arms, I'm hardly adding anything on the arms yet. So it, it, they don't look right even compared to the chest. And, and it's, it's gonna play with you, your mind all the way through until right till the very end. So the, the only reason I'm sort of pointing it out is there is a stage that I've sort of called the panic stage where you sort of think it's all going wrong and just hang in there. If you've stuck to your measurements, keep going, keep adding wire, you know, it, hopefully it will look right in the end and hopefully you haven't made a mistake. If you have made a mistake, if you, if you genuinely know that you didn't do something right and you thought you could correct it earlier on, then maybe it, it is a mistake and you can try and correct it. Uh, but trying to sort of you know, change its position or anything like that now is, is a mistake. Uh, you can't get the tightness in those bends that you did when you were making the skeleton. Uh, you can't get the sort of nuances of the curves and things like that. If you didn't get the skeleton right, then you are potentially in trouble. Uh, 
but don't worry about the proportions just keep going keep adding wire to it so as i'm building her up i've just noticed something else that i'm doing that uh, i probably need to explain uh, i call them hard points a hard point is a feature on the surface that ought to be created by a skeleton but it's not present in our skeleton so what i'm talking about is the bottom of the the ribs you know all we had is two spines we didn't have any ribs so i'm forming a sort of uh, shape that tries to make it look like there's a skeleton underneath as if there is a frame there the chin is another hard point that we didn't have a skull all we had was a loop so you have to sort of build a sort of focal point where you add wire to extend uh, the, the figure to make it look like there's a point there. But the ones I'm working on at the moment are the hips. So I started to build up this, this hip muscle. There's a danger when you're sort of filling out the figure that you just flow the wire up the figure. So you build out the chest and you end up with no sort of shape around the sort of uh, pelvic area. Uh, and, the, and it slopes straight in. Now, on a a woman's body, you sort of uh, the hips come up, and then the waist goes in. The waist is actually quite high, so there's a danger that you end up with a sort of little slim thing that looks like an androgynous figure rather than than a female figure. So I'm built deliberately building up this outside, but I've put a a lump of wire here, and I'll I'll just add a little bit in a, in a second to sort of show you what I'm doing to create a sort of hip bone because I don't just want to build it all up here, otherwise it'll end up sort of very big at the back. I want it to be sort of pretty much a straight line from the top of the buttocks to the waist, straight in, and then there's a sort of kink there as it sort of comes out. It always looks sort of nice and neat rather than having a perfect curve. But I don't want to build all that up too much. I want to build it up where the, the pelvic, the, uh, the pelvis sort of protrudes. So build up these bones here. Now there's a bit of a, strange thing about the, the pelvis i'll build this up now in my head i think that's where the pelvis is going to be and i'll think i'm doing a really good job but as i add more definition th those things will vanish in because she'll get bigger and i'll have to re-add them so you have to sort of keep mentally trying to reposition where you think they're going to be as the as the sort of figure grows it's part of this reverse ice lolly playing minds with you playing tricks with your mind so let me just add a bit of wire on that side so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just starting off with a new loop. So find the midway point. Now, once I've locked it in, trace the wires to make sure they're all the same length. I haven't got one strand that's longer than the rest otherwise i'll struggle so there that's i can rely on on that to work on each half of it now and just get this one out of the way there's an awful lot of wire that sort of goes through this area uh, and that's why again we why we've got two spines you know, you poke the spike through, push the wire through there, and you can't help but notice that that's roughly where the sort of belly button is. It's just the sheer volume of wire that goes through that area. Right, so I'm nicely, nicely locked in with that one now, so I can concentrate on this. So... Although, you know, I've been generally doing sort of long flowing lines along the figure just because I want to build up this specific hard point, this pelvic area. Use me poking tool to poke a hole through and, and wiggle a good hole so I'm not, I'm not just trying to poke it through a little tiny hole and then I can follow that route through. create quite a sort of knot in this area it's not going to look 
texturally very neat because it's just a solid lump of, of sort of wire. But as we sort of get more into layering on what will be the skin, the fact that it's just a lump will, will vanish. So I am just literally creating a, a like a ball of, of wire in that point. If, if you do struggle to get it through, you, you, there's no harm in putting a bit of a curl on, on the needle so you can sort of thread it through and get it to come out somewhere else. I'll we'll take that down to the pelvic floor. back up that forms the stomach muscles pass that through the center there so hopefully you can see on the camera I've got two distinct hard points you know of, of wire that are starting to give me that sort of shape now, I don't want, like I say, I don't want them to be at the back because then you'd end up with a, a big sort of ring around there like you're wearing a spare tire. Uh, I just want the, the, the pelvic muscles to stick out. They need to come out quite a bit more yet, but she just hasn't got enough flesh for me to position them or even work out where they will be yet. It's almost got to grow with this reverse ice lolly for, for me to sort of see where they're going. But wherever you've got these points, so the bottom of the rib cage, the chin, uh, you know, the, these uh, pelvic muscles, you have to sort of just concentrate more wire into those areas and then go back to smooth flows to sort of smooth them over so they become subtly things that are under the surface as if the skeleton had, had created those bumps.